Hey everyone, this is Berwin, the lead tutor from Belief Education. And in today's episode of Just Ask Belief, we will be looking at how to solve questions using algebra. Now before I get into it, I would hope to get your support for my channel by clicking on the subscribe button right below. And if you have any questions or topics that you wish to have me cover, do feel free to hit me up via the contact number found in the description. Now with that, let's get things started. Now solving a question through the use of algebra, which I can uh, like to call it algebraic solving. Okay, it refers to the process of using an algebra to represent an unknown within a question and thereafter seek to find the value of this unknown. Now some common themes of question that you will come across, okay, would include those of speed, area and parameter, volume, profit and loss, uh, angles, uh, so on and so forth. Okay, This is definitely not an exhaustive list, but what we will be working on today will definitely help you build your confidence in dealing with any of them. Okay? There are two essential know-hows that we must have in order to solve with algebra. The first would be forming equations. Okay, and the second would be to manipulate, right, equations. Manipulating equations, all right. Okay, so my main focus for today in this episode would be to help you learn to form an equation. Okay, so and if you are unclear as to what an equation is, please do check out the video in the link right above, all right. So when it comes to an equation, the most essential component of it is to is what I call the connecting factor. Okay, let me write it down first. Okay, connecting factor. Okay, in short, let's call this CF. Okay, now, all right. So uh, let me elaborate on this. An equation is made up of the left hand side being equivalent to the right hand side. Now whatever that you intend either side, be it this or this, uh, to represent is actually known as the connecting factor. So be it the left hand side or the right hand side, we call it the CF. Okay. So for instance, it can be the speed of the train, the volume of the tank, when it's full, so on and so forth. Practically it's the thing that connects the left to the right. So how do we go about finding it, right? I will share with you two of my top processes or methods in which you can engage in to identify the connecting factor and thereby forming your equation. Now, um, this method, the first would be that of identifying, which I put it short, uh, identify key concept and also the formula involved. Okay, the second would be to follow the story and connect the dots. Okay, all right. So let me highlight that these are not the only two ways of finding your connecting factors, okay? But rather it's something that has worked out for myself and my students, which I would want to share with you, all right? So let me demonstrate how to go about applying um, each of these concepts, uh, be it the identifying or following the story, by using some questions from these common themes, all right? Okay, so let's proceed to the first question. Okay, it's as such. The distance traveled by Singapore KL high-speed train is 300 km. If average speed of the train is increased by 20 km per hour, the train would arrive 15 minutes faster. Find the initial average speed of the train. All right, for this, um, I will apply the first method. Okay, let's put in method number one. Okay, which is to identify the key concepts 
and formula. A key concept is basically a topic that you have learned in math. For instance, the obvious one in this question would be that of speed, right? So, and hence the relevant formula, right? You can find would be that of what we always know, speed equals to distance over time. Okay. To make things easier, it's good to list out the pieces of information that is required in the formula. So we have the distance is uh, 300 km. Okay, the speed before, right? To us, we do not know. Let me denote this as uh, S with a subscript BEF equals to a question mark because we do not know. The time taken before, T, okay, is equals to unknown as well, right? So as for the speed after, let's have that. You can see that it's actually the speed before, right, plus 20, okay? And this is in km per hour, okay? So as for the time after, okay, t, uh, t, uh, t equals to, all right, it is actually the time before minus, because it is actually shorter, right, before. And since this is in hours, therefore the time before here is actually in hours as well, right? So therefore, I would write this as one quarter because that is 15 minutes, right? Okay, so the formula itself is a good starting point for us to identify the connecting factor. So generally, the connecting factor can be any of these components over here within the formula, right? It can be the distance, the speed, the time, all right, and since we are looking for the initial speed of the train, which is this over here, we then can erase this and we shall use an unknown. Okay, let me erase it first. And denote it with X, all right? With that, we would have to use any of the other components as the connecting factor, all right, any of these. So I would choose to go with the time after, okay? So um, that's where we are gonna be using this equation, okay? So here is how we're gonna go about tackling this. It is pretty much like putting uh, pieces of the jigsaw puzzle together, okay? Since time is equals to distance divided by speed, all right? So we can find the time before by using this technique, right? So this would help us to get this piece of information over here, which is time before. So in the same fashion, we will use the distance, okay, to divide with the speed after, in order for us to work out the other side of the equation, which is the time after. All right, great. So we have both the time after and time before in this manner, and that actually links up everything, right? Yeah. So with that, we are able to then put together our entire, um, this equation, okay? So let's make some space for us to work into the details. Um, give me a moment, let's bring this up. Okay. Now we will start off with always denoting our unknown, all right? So let me first write down, we are gonna do a setup as of moment. So we will start off with denoting our unknown. So which in this case will always be the one that we are looking for. And that would be the, okay, for our be the initial speed, right? Of the train. Okay. So with that, we shall move into mapping out or coming up with all the components required. Time before is equals to the 300 over X which is in hours. And then we will have speed after is actually equivalent to X plus 20, right? Because uh, that's the initial speed plus 20 km per hour, okay? Then we have time after, we will have to work this out by using 300 divided by the speed after, which is X plus 20. So we have hours here, okay? All right. so having both sides of the equation, right, we can then write it out easily 
with the time after, which is 300 over x plus 20, being equivalent to the time before, 300 over x minus 1 quarter. And at voila, we have the entire equation that we need. All right. So this is where I will um, stop what I'm doing for question one because our main objective of this episode is to work on forming equations. So let's move forward and look at the next question and introduce to you the other thought process. All right. Okay. So for question two, here we go. Katrina bought an equal amount of uh, sweets and chocolates. The sweets were sold at three for two dollars and the chocolates were sold at four for three dollars. He paid five dollars more for the chocolate than the sweets. How many chocolates did he buy? All right, for these, we shall make use of the second method. Okay, let me write it out. So method number two. Okay, which is to follow the story and connect the dots. Yes, correct. Okay, so this process can turn out to be more straightforward because we are going to use the connecting factor. We're going to identify it straight away at the start, which is actually the last piece of information that you can find in the question. Okay. So in our question, as you can see, the last piece of information is the one that I highlighted here. And this can be interpreted as the cost of the item or the difference in cost. Now it's really optional as to what you choose to interpret it as, as long as it's relevant, right? So I will choose to go with uh, cost, uh, let's put it as cost first. And I will choose to go with cost of items. And therefore, it is actually a cost of item between that of chocolate or sweets okay so remember that we are trying to form an equation so it can, it can be any of these right all right i will choose to go with cost of sweets all right so we have an equation where the left equals to the right now we will want it to be the cost of the sweets all right so as suggested by the name of this method we will follow through the question and find the components we require of course we start off with denoting the unknown which is the thing that we're trying to find Okay, number of chocolate, right? Chocolate uh, bought, yes. So the first key component we can work out based on the first part of the question is actually this, right? The cost of sweets. It's actually equivalent to the x over three, which is, gives you the number of sets of threes. Then we multiply these by two, two dollars, right? Which gives us two x over three, Great. So the information that we have from the third sentence allows us to work out the cost of the chocolate in the same fashion. All right. So let's write down the cost of chocolate. Yes. Okay. It's equivalent to x over 4, which is the number of sets of 4s, and then multiply it by 3. Yes, that's 3x over $4. All right. So once we have the cost of both items, we can then connect them by using the last piece of information, which is the cost of the sweets, right? Um, and we know that the cost of sweets is equals to cost of chocolate minus $5, as chocolate costs $5 more than the sweets, right? Since we have all components required, we therefore can just put in the numbers and form up our equation. All right, and that is where we have um, for this cost of sweets, 2x over 3 equals to 3x over 4 minus 5. And voila, that's it, okay? Yeah, that's our equation. So this is how you follow through the story and comes up with the equation using the last piece of information as a connecting factor. All right, so that's all from, from me today on Just Ask Belief, which we are focusing on forming of equations. Um, in order for you to use algebra to solve your question. Okay, so this is like very uh, much like the part one. So I hope that this comes in timely for you all and I'll be working on more questions to cover the last important know-how which is to manipulate the equations, right? To find your values. 
So stay tuned. Meanwhile, do check out our other episodes and our one minute to A series to work on your fundamentals. Till then, I'll see you. Ciao.